Okay. All right, so let's look at chapter uh, unit eight and unit seven. This one here, I actually had two assignments. Um, you know, I wanted to do the WordPress thing, but I think we didn't need to do that. I know you did it before already. So we're gonna skip all that and we'll just go right into the CMS, okay? Um, so the CMS here, it's a content management system. You know what that is, like WordPress, and we're using Blackboard as a content management system. It's a system that allows you to create content. I mean, whether those are, you know, um, graphics, videos, audio, or uh, just pages, that's all it is. Um, and the way to do that is so that you can generate content um, especially web pages dynamically, right? Uh, using a single template, you can generate content uh, without having to create physical pages, <clears throat> okay? Otherwise, I mean, imagine you could be like, create like a thousand web pages, HTML, that's a lot of work. Uh, so we don't do that. And you would create a CMS or sometimes call it LMS for learning management system instead. So look at that. We'll look at um, the MVC model a little bit. Um, and, and we're going to use this model to create a really simple content management, management system. Uh, this library here called HTML underscore quick form two, this is part of the pair library. Uh, the pair is, I think, the PHP extension archive library that allows you to, you know, um, automate a lot of processes. We're not gonna go into uh, the quick form tool here. It's a powerful tool actually, uh, but it has a lot of errors. And just to have it set up and run and program, it's, I don't know why, but it's not really that friendly. Uh, once you have it running, it's, it's really cool because you can create forms very quickly uh, using objects. Um, but, you know, since it has a lot of problem in the past, I just kind of like ignore that. And we we'll just create forms the way we normally do. <clears throat> and then, um, okay, so that's pretty much it. So this chapter nine here is from the Allman textbook. Uh, walks through creating this CMS here, which is also the assignment you were doing for this week. Um, it's a lightweight CMS. Uh, using the MVC model, the way that he does is a little bit different from what I'm, what I'm going to do, but the process is still the same. Okay, so let's look at the MVC model. If you remember what that looks like, uh, let's see if I have a I have a diagram here. I think <clears throat> what does he? Okay, so this photo structure kind of gives you an idea what that may look like. Um, so the root folder, and then over here, <clears throat> they have the way he had here is it's okay. I mean, it's a bit confusing sometimes, but it's okay. So model view controller, right? So the model contains your data. So notice here, I don't think he has a model file here. Yeah, I think he called it classes in here uh, because models are usually classes that store data. Like in this example would be like the pages of the content management, management system and the users, right? Uh, you can other things like um, uh, video content, um, you know, blogs, all those will be your model contain the data, right? <clears throat> so those will be in, in the model. In my example, I will call it models, it just makes more sense. And then we have the views, right? Views will be just the templates, uh, HTML, mainly HTML uh, content. Uh, the author in this book here uses actual HTML file, which I don't recommend because again, it's not secure because if it's HTML, if there's any error in your code, you can actually see the content, see your, your actual code, right? It's not very secure. So they should be, even though they are views, they should be in PHP file. Um, and then you have your controllers. And uh, normally you have another folder here called controllers and you put your controllers in there. Controllers are just functions, okay? They perform the logic uh, for your website. So you separate your, your models from the views from the controllers. And uh, since we have a really simple um, program here, I'm not gonna go to the extent of creating a single object here. 
and then just point to controller. So for our example, we will just put controllers right inside the root directory. So the index page will be a controller. The page is a controller. You have the user is a, a controller. You have the login controller, log out controller. And those are just a logic, right? logistics way. Okay, so you, so you separate this code into the own separate um, you know, parts. And that's basically MVC. Uh, it's a really old um, model, probably almost 50 years old now, it's, if not older. But it's still been used today you know, uh, a lot by any many, many uh, programs. So MVC is, is um, I guess you could think of it like a design, even though it's not really design, it's more of a software pattern, uh, a pattern of how you can break things into the own compartments and then how you uh, link them back together to make them work again, okay? <clears throat> so if you have taken, um, uh, I know, uh, Claire did, yeah, taken uh, Angular and React courses in the past with me, uh, Angular and React, they use this similar model, NBC model, uh, but the new model is now already MVVM. We call it the modern view of view model, right? Different. Apple uses its own model uh, for Android devices. I mean, for um, iPhones. And then uh, Android Studio has its own model as well. But they're similar. It's still uh, based off this MVC model. <clears throat> okay. So the result will look very similar to what we're doing so far. It's just that the pattern is different. So um, <clears throat> you get, get a feel of that. And then towards the end of the semester, we're gonna dive into a true um, object-oriented MVC model called Laravel. And you see how that works, okay? So uh, let's go and then create something like this. I will also put these like CSS images here and scripts into another folder. I will call it assets because they're assets, <clears throat> okay? Or, uh, maybe like public, if you want to call it that, that's okay too. And then um, we'll link the index to the page. And then also, I'm not going to do the login, logout, and, and registration stuff. I don't think we have time for that, but I think just do one or two, you can get the idea of how that works. And so um, after this, I hope that as you go through the assignment, um, even, though, even though all the codes provided, I would encourage you to kind of just trace the code and look at it and see how they are all connected together. Okay. So let's go into our um, program here and I'm going to create a new folder for unit seven. And so right in here, I'm going to create some directories. And <clears throat> this is going to be our models directory. To make it quicker, I'm just going to do Control C, Control V really quick. Um, control C, Control V, and we'll change it just to another one called, um, what should we call it? Uh, views. Okay, our views folder. Control C, Control V. This would be the assets folder. And what else do we need? I guess we can call it, we can call it um, classes too, maybe. Yeah, we can call it classes. It'll be like just regular classes for, um, you know, like functions. Uh, classes will be like, like database classes, database connection. <clears throat> okay, the database will be there. And then we can have another uh, folder called includes. The includes here will be things like um, utility functions, um, any, other, any other includes like a, the, the header and the footer includes. If you want to use function, you can also put HTML. And actually, um, in this example, we'll actually include um, the header and the footer as it includes, as opposed to a function this time. And, <clears throat> okay. And then what else do we need here? Yeah, so again, usually you put a controller, so we're not, not gonna do that, okay? So um, now I'm going to turn on my exam and we're gonna build a table first. And this will be the same table in the, in the assignment. So I'll give you this SQL and you can create one really quick. <clears throat> so go to the admin here. Um, 
Okay, let me let me go ahead and then uh, if I can drop, I think it's in here. Let me see if I can find it. Okay, uh, and then what's the chat screen at? Okay, give me a second. Put in the chat here. The SQL you need to use. So this is the one I'm going to use. So you can just create a database first uh, because I think the classes are called users with a plur plural and pages plural. You can use the same database you've been using. That's that's fine. Or you just create one. And the one I'm, I'm going to create is called ABP. I mean Advanced PHP underscore CMS. That's be my my database. And I'm going to also include that in here as well. Okay, so let me copy that first and go to my over here. I create a new database. I'll call it close this ADV PHP underscore CMS. Okay, and then I just you know select that, go to import and import the file I just gave you. And so, uh, not that one, I'm sorry. Get it from here. So this is the one. And just click, go down here at the bottom. And it should create two folders. I mean, two tables, pages, and users. And again, this is the same one I'm using the same one, okay? I just basically modified the pages a little bit, has some extra content in there. Um, but the pages contains, uh, you know, five fields, one, two, three, four, five, and then plus ID. And the pages has a column ID, that's for all the pages itself, their own ID track here. And there's a creator ID here. So this creator ID is the foreign key that maps to the users, right? So the users has, you know, their own ID here. So this one is linked to this ID here, okay? So that user two, has this many posts, user three had this many posts and so forth, okay? Database design. So that's that and it's running. And then now we can go back over here and start creating our um, classes. I also wanna give you uh, maybe some of the files as we move along. But for now, let's go into the um, access folder, create another folder here for, for uh, CSS. So again, you put your CSS images and graphics in here, but I think we're just gonna put CSS for now. I'm not gonna have any graphics in this demo, okay? So I'll also give you that CSS, so you don't have to, you don't have to um, type it. This would be the same or similar as CSS I use for the, um, the stocks. And let me see if we can find that for you. Okay, I just call it main also. So if you want to just load that to your page. All right. And I think it's where to go. Yeah, I'm just going to copy this here. Okay, so I have my main CSS in here. <clears throat> so let's see, for the um, the header, that's gonna be the, in the includes. And I'll also give you that too, so you don't have to type a lot, okay? Uh, let's see, where is it at? PHP, my admin's got me stuck on a loading screen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'll get there eventually. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I don't know if it's fascinating if you just type it or not, but um, I'll, maybe I'll just is it better if I copy and paste on this on the chat and you just copy and paste your code? Is that is that faster? Oh, I mean, I'm just trying to do the like import the 
SQL you sent us? Oh, now it loaded. Okay, finally. <laughs> it's just taking a long time. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, if, if you're um, behind, just let me know. Because I want Thanks. you to uh, do it together so you can, this, you can get this. I wonder if my VPN is also making it slower. I don't know. Are you putting on Apollo or are you doing locally? Um, just to PHP my admin. Okay. Sorry, it's kind of blah. Okay, uh, well, in the meantime, I'm going to go and uh, give you a more, couple more files. Maybe that's, let's see. The I one have CSS file. file downloaded and stuff. It's just this part that's taking a while. <laughs> yeah. I will also give you just the header and footer so that, um, let's see what's time. This is just put it in clues, okay? And I'll put that in the chat also. <clears throat> so here is the header. So notice I'm using, um, right, we're using dot ink, just we know it's include, but that PHP file. And then the footer as well. And <clears throat> so basically, you know, you, you build the page first and then the way you like it and you break this apart. Right. And then you break it into, it's like a kind of, you just slice it into the footer and the header. So those will be the, the same across all sites. And then in between is the content. Okay. So that's where all the, that's, <clears throat> that's where the views come in. The views, we just have these the inside the body uh, content right below the navigation. Okay. So <clears throat> in here, I'm going to add that to, um, I don't think I have anything in the functions. I probably won't use that, but uh, the header and footer, I'm gonna put those inside my includes. <laughs> I don't want to factor this. Okay, so if you look at the header, <clears throat> um, this is a, File. So on the top, you have your meta tags, and you can echo the title page up here, right? If it is if it is set, then go ahead and then add the page title. It's a variable, so we'll just populate it here. Uh, so every page will have its own separate title because we're gonna include that on the actual page on the controllers, right? So uh, it's a little bit different from what we did before. You can put this into a function, it's fine. But if you use a function, then you have to pass the page title to that function so you can display it, okay? So in different ways. And then down here, you see a variable called user. If user is um, a set, then you go ahead and show the logout. Otherwise, they need to log in, right? So that's what the login logged out here. Again, we're not gonna implement this, but we'll just force the user to be logged in, right? <clears throat> and then here, again, register, I'm not gonna do that, but that, this is the navigation part. <clears throat> and then I cut off right after the header here. Okay, so in between, I'm gonna have my index, my uh, page, my user presentation, whatever it is. So we'll just contain this part here. And then it continues on down to the end of that. And then at the very bottom, you have the footer here. And then you close the container tag, close the body in HTML, right? <clears throat> so they all stitch nicely together. So now I'm going to go and create an index file and the root directory of this project. This will be the landing page. Okay, <clears throat> so that's for that. Um, so what does it contain? Uh, well, we're gonna, it's going to contain a view. So somewhere up here, I have in here, I have include a view of the index. Okay, so before we do that, um, let's see. Let's see if. Um, Let's see the view for the index. We're gonna have, <clears throat> what do we have for the index, right? So in the view here, 
I'm going to create an index for my view. Okay, I'll call it um, index also, I guess. You can call it view underscore view dot index if that's better, but um, that's that's okay. So this is my index. Remember, it's in the view directory. So what do, what do I put in here? So for this one, I'm just going to leave it just like it just contain main, main HTML. So it's going to start right below the header right here. I want a main, uh, main tag because my container is up here, right? My container is up here and then the header for the navigation. Then now my main content starts here. So I'm going to put the main and then I close the main at the bottom. <clears throat> and in between here is where you put your stuff, okay? And this is gonna be a, um, the actual content. So what does it happen here? Maybe I'll put a um, the article section and the inside article will put the H1 <clears throat> and then we'll put here like the page title uh, or like the date and then, or well, how we wanna do it? This doesn't really matter. We put a date here and then the, um, the title here for, the, 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 for every page title, <clears throat> something like that. And then um, right below that, we put the a paragraph for um, intro to the, the title, the, the, the article, right? <clears throat> and then below that one, uh, you put a link. So maybe I'll link it to a, a page, PHP. I'm gonna include ID and the ID will be based on, so this part will be generated automatically using uh, scripts, okay? And just put it for now, so it's a skeleton, you can see what it is. So the ID will be a particular ID, like for example, the ID to an article, like article 12, okay? And then we'll, we'll do that here. I just put that article for now, we can see, and then we'll put here the article title, right? Uh, more about that, right? We'll read more, whatever it is. And then we'll do that at every page. So if I were to, you know, um, just, Let's say if I do that twice, like that. <clears throat> so article, you know, 14, whatever it is. Okay. Title, um, go check title two and then title one. Just just demo. Okay. So that's my main content. And then <clears throat> that's gonna go between my includes inside the index page. It's the landing page. So the top is my header. So when you put here. <clears throat> Include the uh, includes header, right? That's the header, and then I'll duplicate that control D. This is the views, and then this is the index views, and then this is the footer, right? That's that's the logic, and so <clears throat> this is the controller. Okay, the index page is the controller. I put here um, controller. Page. Uh, this one here is the view. Okay. And then the model is in the database. So all your pages will look like this fashion. And then, so the title page, notice in the header file, it's below here because I need to access the, uh, the title, the page title variable here. Right, it'll replace that. So if I want to use the same variable in my index page on the very top control, I will set that to a title here. I put here maybe the um, home page. So that title will go into the includes when you stitch this together. Even though, right, you know, even though the includes file it's not um, doesn't have a page title here, it will it will be set and use it once you put it together, right? Same thing with the user. I don't have it here, but that will also be stitched together. So you kind of have to map this out together and then it will display the, the main body of the content uh, to this place and then add the footer at the end and then we're done. And uh, let's see the header, does it have link to CSS? Yes, it does link to my CSS already. As you can see, for assets, just as in main, if you don't have that, if you have a different structure, just make sure it points to that um, the CSS, okay? So basically I built my little simple model view controller, okay? 
So what kind of views do you have? Well, it depends on what type of pages you're gonna have, how many things you're gonna have on, on the site. The index is the index page. I could call it home as the, um, as the, uh, the template, but I call it index, it's the same name. <clears throat> and we don't do any database connection yet, but I wanna test and see and see what it looks like. So go ahead and run the browser and see what it looks like. So here we go. Then I have a problem here. It says the, the user is not found, that's okay. <clears throat> So at least it's working. You know, I have my, my navigation top, my footer, and then my content goes in here. And then this will be, um, you know, dynamically generated and, and so on. So uh, this message is, is the user is not found, this variable here, uh, because in line 17, I don't have the user created. So to see that, to remove the error, uh, you have two options you can create a variable user like um, in the header area up here. Uh, I mean like uh, in the index, you can create a user here. Just set null. Let me see if that goes away or not. Okay, so you can see it goes away because this is visible everywhere. Right about the header. So that will take care of that. <clears throat> so now my page looks pretty much already like stitched together already. We just have to uh, connect to the database and then generate content. And then um, it will look very similar to what I have here. <clears throat> so noted it showed the, uh, showed the login now because the user is set to true. Not true, but I mean, it's set to um, the user exists, right? It checks to see it. If it is set, it is not set, meaning that there's no, um, I mean, down here, if a user is not present. But this will be a, an object, okay? Uh, usually an object of the user class. <clears throat> so then let's go ahead and create our database. So that'll be inside the class. Go ahead and create a database file. I'll call it um, uh, db.php. And this will be a class, so class db. And we did this before. If you remember, <clears throat> uh, you can copy and paste it over if you want to, but um, I'm just gonna create some, some constants here. Not all of them. Uh, we'll use PDO also, so you can have a more, um, yes, experience, right? Inside here, we're going to use a public variable called PDO. And then our constructor in here will be under, under, and then constructor, just hit enter. We'll have a function here to connect. So we have that already. It'll be similar to before. Connect. Uh, I'm missing some public function. And then inside the constructor, I'm going to call that function connect. Right. So this db connect. Um, not not db connect. Just connect in this example. So PDO, I'm gonna put here, um, we can do like we did before, we create a different variables to hold the, you know, to hold the database, or we can just connect directly. And for this example here, I just do really short, okay? Uh, short connection. So we'll just say that this, go ahead and set this PDO to new PDO. And then here is, the strength, right? If you remember, I'll put a separate line so you can see. The first one here is, of course, the, it's a string, right? It's a long string of, uh, actually, no, this is uh, more confusing. Let's go back to the string. It's a string. The first one is the driver. 
So if you want to use a variable input driver here, you will do that, but it'll be just my SQL. The driver is that. And then the next will be the host or the domain, right? Host is uh, localhost. Again, from here on, the order is not important. It's a key value pair, right? And then the DB name is going to be ADB PHP underscore CMS, the one we just created. So that is the, uh, this part is just the DNS part, okay? So we have, we've got that one done. And then the next thing is the password. I'm gonna use the name of password. So username will be just root. And then the password is just blank. Okay, so that is our connection string. And constants can go up here if you want to do that. So you can define a, um, you know, maybe this way is better. Uh, the user and, and we'll like say user. No, I just, I'll leave it as is, but usually you put it to a variable name. But I put here, I put a table, the table name. So I have a table underscore uh, user. And then this is mapped to the users table. And then we'll do another one for the pages. And then again would be pages. I think it's plural, okay? So those are constants and we can access those throughout the, uh, the program. <clears throat> so remember that when we connect, I did not do any security stuff. You wanna wrap it with a try cache block, right? So let's see if it has one. Let's see if I select this line here and um, right click. Uh, it doesn't have surround thing. Generate, uh, oh, darn it, doesn't have it. <laughs> I want to just say it's surround by. Anyway, I want to try this, okay? We have to try it, okay? So this line needs to be inside because it might have an error, right? When I try that, if there's no error, then we can catch it up here. If there is any error, and here will be the PDO exception, okay? Not the exception, but the PDO exception, we call it E for error. And then what do we do here? Well, we can just show me error if you want to. Um, and we put the error so we can see. I put here kind of like, um, no, actually no, let's not put error. I'm not, we're gonna create another view, <clears throat> okay? The view will be inside here for the error. And we just do really simple here. So let's create another view here. Uh, in fact, I should just copy the index here. It's faster. What I want to do is, um, is this, okay? So we get an error. Then I'm going to put a variable called page title here. It's equal to um, like error. And then we're going to load the, um, let me try this again, includes the, includes and the header inc. You can put into another function if you want. Include that. Also include the views, and then they have the error message page. Okay. And then you have to put it both down here. And then once you do that, and then you want to call exit so that the page is exit nicely, okay? So that's what I want to do. I already have these, and that's, I just need to add the error page in here. So we can go ahead and then copy the index here. It will look very similar, right? Copy and paste and change it to say error. <clears throat> but basically this is our connection string, right? Either successful or failure. And we want to be able to you know, I'll put nicely uh, a nice message to the user. And then uh, if you want to go to the error page over here, we're just gonna, uh, we're not gonna have all of these. Let's put a very simple message in here. Um, <clears throat> I put a type, the, the, the error, and then we'll put the error message right here. 
and then we'll put it here. Um, that, right? Close that. And inside here is the E get message. Okay. This E here doesn't exist in this page, this place, but it's called E. You want to use a different variable, that's fine too. I use E because inside here, I call it E. Okay, so the, the page title will be insert, in, injected into the header, which is here, at the all the information here. And then it's going to launch the error page. This is the view again, right? And then the view just have one simple message here and the main page. Um, I, I don't have to actually, I don't need article here. You can take that out. Just really simple like that. And then it prints the error and then prints the message here. Save that. And then you stitch right back the footer and then you exit. Okay, so that is the connection for that. Notice this is an object class, okay? When we create an object of the DB class, that object, whatever it is, it's gonna have access to all these variables called PDO and functions and things like that, right? Okay, so assuming that's, oh, I have too many semicolons here. So that's that. And then the next thing is right, right away, we want to retrieve some data. So let's go ahead and create that in here. So all these like common operations are right in here. So this is for um, get all pages. Okay, this is just, just do what pages in here. Just do this, you can see it. A function call get all pages. And like before, when I pass to this function, I need to get a, a table, uh, even though I know it's for pages, but I'll put table anyway, okay? So a variable called table, and I'm getting all of it, I don't need ID, right? We know that, I'm just gonna call the table to get all of them, it's just one go. And then in here, this is the query you wanna use. Um, query, you can select everything from the table. Uh, let's see. Just select everything from the table. Let's see what happens, okay? So select everything uh, from the table. And you want to, um, you can also order by date add. Remember our database has the date add. Let's see. Over here, I right? have the date added. So let's sort it by that order if you want. If you want to sort it, that's okay too. I say table and then order by um, date added. That is the query. And then we're going to um, run that, okay? And then we'll return, we're going to return the result set. So the query will be like this, PDO query, the query. And then you, this, remember this PDO query returns a result set, okay? Returns a result set. And we're going to return this entire result set to where it's being used. So in this case, we don't have to do any of those um, prepare statements because you know nothing that we really added in here. If you're using the where clause, then yeah, that would be needed. And then that's where the next one comes in, okay? So for now, uh, let's add another one down here. This is the function get one page. So you need the table and you need the ID. It'll be kind of similar, I guess. Um, so we'll just copy this line here. And I'm not gonna order this by anything because you know once you gotta get it, you don't have to order anything, right? <clears throat> but you do need to get the where clause where the ID is equal to and again, we don't want to be equal to ID like this, okay? We want to secure it so you can put 
a question mark if you want, or you can go and use the ID route instead, right? So I'll use this one here. <clears throat> I mean, lots of ways. And then once we do that, we're going to prepare this query because we don't want injection. So you would use this statement. It's equal to this PDO and then prepare. So we prepare the query, right? So that's prepare it. And then now when you find it, you have a couple of options. I think I showed you last time. And since we only have one variable, that's the ID, you can just use the bind, the prepare bind. Otherwise, you can use the array as well. But I guess it's just easier if you do that. So we'll just find it, okay? Binding to the statement. Find params, remember that one? Params, another. And then we're gonna bind these two parameters, right? Since we know the, uh, the variable, if you put a question mark like this, all right? If you question mark, then it'll be the first position. So it'd be one and then the data. If you're using the actual variable name like this, then instead of one, you put the ID here like that, right? This one's gonna match this variable here. And then this is the actual ID. So, if you're using variables, use variables. If you're using just numbers, then the order is important, okay? We bind that already, and then now we're gonna execute it. We're gonna execute, notice this is different from up here. We use the PDO to do a query because we just do retrieve without any uh, data injection here. This one here we're using prepare because we're scared of this value here, okay? So now we're going to do a statement execute and we're not passing any parameter to that because we already find the data here. Otherwise you would pass the data here and you don't find it. So either way, it's up to you. And then when we run this execution, you're gonna get either a successful or not successful. You gotta get a, um, a role change, right? either a zero or one or how many it is. So I'm gonna return that value over here to another variable and we can call this one here like the result. Okay. So the result is either successful or not. And I'm not gonna return result because this one here is return uh, true or false only. So it's not useful. And, and when I call elsewhere, why? Because um, I want to be able to <clears throat> fetch the data back. When you fetch the data back, you're gonna fetch it through the statement object, okay? And so um, by that way, when you fetch it, you want to be able to um, call the fetch function and the fetch function is um, part of, this, part of the, uh, the statement here and not part of the PDO. So that's why you want to do that here check to see if the result is successful or not. So you can do like, if result is successful, then go ahead and return uh, something, right? If it's not successful, then down here, you'll return um, just null. This is the default, if it doesn't match. If it does match, then you want to uh, fetch the data. <clears throat> Put here, um, fetch, fetch uh, data, and then so the data will be the result set. So it'll be similar to this part here. Fetch the data, <clears throat> and then finally you will return the data back. Okay, so we turn the result set to where, where it's being used. So we get the similar um, result. Return the result set, return result set. Okay, so we'll come back and do this part. But for now, we need to create the, um, the models. So in here, 
the models are, um, we have two tables, so one for each table, okay? So let's see, the tables in here, I'm gonna create a page called um, page.php, and then we'll do one more for the user. Okay, so the page in here, um, I think, yeah, it's going to be uh, quite a lot. Uh, uh, actually, just give, yeah, I'll give you that too. I think I already have it um, created. I think I didn't change anything from the um, example in the book on this part. Uh, let me see. All right, let me just share this with you again. So in the models, yeah, this should be the same. I'm gonna drag this to it and give it to you guys, okay? It's faster, I think. And I should do the same here. Okay, well, let me do it. Okay, fine. Thank you. Did it work? And I'll, I'll, and I'll just explain. <clears throat> so the page for well, the user first. User, we have you know all the IDs and the username password here. Again, I'm not doing any registration here. So um, later on, when you do the assignment, you will do this, I guess. I don't know if you had to or not, but this would be just the uh, for the user. And all we do here is fetching the user ID here. It's a bunch of getter and setters, right? We check to see if the user is an admin or not, right? It's this is admin is type set in the database. So nothing much here, just a key function for the user. Uh, the page database, we have again all these seven fields in the database. Okay. Um, this would be the actual fields. Constructor doesn't mean anything here. Um, and then we have a bunch of getters and setters. Okay, so get the ID, get the, uh, this, the creator is the user ID. This is the actual page ID, the title page, the content, and then so on. So these are coming from the database, okay? Because it's an object, right? It's a class object. So instead of, um, you know, making query every time we, we call this function, we will query from the database here, okay? So when you get one page, I get the result back, okay? And then if the result is found, then I'm gonna fetch the data using this result, I mean, uh, this statements here. So let's do that here, okay? So we have the, the um, that included. So I'm gonna fetch the data. So that means I'm gonna use this statement here Remember that this thing I showed you last time has a lot of function you can use. And you can fetch by just a regular fetch. You get a result set, so you get a regular result set like this. You can fetch it to an, an, um, another uh, array, or you can fetch to an object of a class. So we have object, a, a class called page, right? So the, the, uh, the signature or the, what you call the, um, the shape of this page has exactly all these six fields, seven fields that will match our database. So when you fetch it back from the database, all these fields will, will go right into the object. So you can have a, um, a really nice object here. So here you have a function called set the fetch mode. And in here you can, you can set to PDO colon colon and you can see here, um, <clears throat> if you type in the fetch, right? You have the fetch mode to associate both class type, column, function, you can set to another function, or so on. So we want the one that says class, okay? We want this fetch to class, and what is the class gonna be? It's gonna be called page. <clears throat> so this one here sets that for you. The statement object now prepares to fetch the result from the database, all those seven fields, and they gotta match this page object. Okay, this class here. This class has exactly the same footprint. If you don't have it, 
it's going to fail. Okay. So it's that is important. Once I get that set up, then I need to go ahead and then make it fetch. And then, so here, I'm going to do a um, statement that fetch, go ahead and fetch it. And then once I get the result set, I'm going to assign to a variable called page. So my page object, this is an object now, okay? Um, I basically instantiate the object of the type page because this one here knows that the mode I'm fetching, I'm returning a result set to an object of the class page. So this is similar to saying like, you know, page is equal to new page, right? If you do that and then you add every field manually yourself, but PDL is nice because you have to do that. You Once you assign that, the result set only comes in each field assigned to the page object. And now this is an object of the page class. Pretty cool, huh? <clears throat> and then once you get it done, how do we know it really works or not? Okay. What if the data doesn't come back and it's, it's nothing or it's, it's something, so you have to check it first. So you have to say, if the page is really there, if it's not null, because if this, if this function fails, then the object will be null. You never instantiate the object. So if it's null, then um, we don't do anything, right? Otherwise, if it's not null, I mean, if the page does have something, then we will return the page. Otherwise, it will skip, the whole thing will skip, and then we turn no down here. Okay, so it returns the page as an object, the object that points to this class. And this is for fetching one page. And this one here, fetches all pages, but it returns not an object of the page class, it returns a query result set. So there's a difference there, okay? <clears throat> so we'll see if this works. Um, so that we got those done. And then now we need to do is we need to instantiate database connection. So my way of doing things was to create a config file, right? So if I close all these here, I need to create a config file that will stitch everything together. Okay, inside here, I'm gonna turn on this session. <clears throat> so I don't have to call anywhere else. Once I include that in every page at the top, everything in the session is on. Yeah, I need to include here the, um, the the, uh, the DB and all those other stuff, right? All this, I need to include all this thing that I need. So that's in the classes, DB, uh, DB. I need that. I need the models page uh, for the user and the models for the pages. And I don't want to use the function, but you, I mean, why not? Not yet, but that would be the, um, the includes, what do you put it? Yeah, the includes and then the functions. So I'm not gonna include the, do I have it here? I don't. Yeah, I don't have it, but if I do have it, it would be there. So let me turn this off, I don't have it. So notice I don't include the header and footer here, right? Because these are actual, actual content, right? So I don't do that here. Because <clears throat> if you do that, then it'll be rendered right here. And you don't do that because those are only added to the actual, the controller pages. So that's, that's it for this one here. And then and I need to create the DB object. That's gonna be the new DB class, and then I need to have the user. Uh, actually, you know, user don't need it. Uh, yeah, why not? You can you can have it, it's fine. Because we want to, um, 
you want to set it so that it's visible every page. But usually you don't create until you log in, right? After you log in, then you create a user, but um, for now that's okay. <clears throat> so that's gonna be injected, the config <clears throat> add to every page. So I'm pretty much done here for this one. And now if I go, I start from the index page, the landing page, right? I got my title, I got this. So I need to have a config file. So I notice I put user here. So this time I'm not gonna use it because I'm gonna use it from the include. So that already contains the user. So it does the user, <clears throat> it does the database connection. If there's anything fails, it will crash here. Otherwise, it'll go and load the index page um, and so on. So right now, you want to save it and run and make sure it still works, okay? And uh, let's see. Okay, so it still works, right? If it crashes, it has an error, you want to fix it, um, but so far so good. And just to make sure it does, does, does work, right? <laughs> you can always go to the database connection here and um, I'll put a message, okay, right here. <clears throat> if it's successful and echo it. So we put here, so we can see that it's calling the database and then we'll just turn it off. I can't see it. I think it's there and I just can't see it um, because, because of this navigation. But let me see. The actual key will do that for you. Oh, yeah, that one. Let me see if it's in the uh, page source. You can see up here, right? Success. Okay, it's hidden up here. So we know that it's working. and then I can go back and turn it off. So, <clears throat> all right, so I, I wanna just um, say that we caused an error. And right, let's see what happens, okay? So let's go ahead and let's go ahead and put here, um, I put like, uh, in the valid database for like a TTT, whatever. And then it's gonna load the error page. Let's see if that's true. I don't know. Refresh it, right? You see they load the error page and notice the error doesn't have the, I didn't put the include uh, inside the error page for some reason. Uh, so you get some error here, so the database is not known. So notice how dangerous this is. Because I output the message, and you don't, you never want to do this to the user, to the to the public, okay? Because they know that, aha. Uh -huh. So you are trying to have a database look similar to this. Now I can hack it, right? So if you never want to do that, just say, you know, cannot connect to DB or something. Uh, and so uh, people don't know. <clears throat> but it does load um, the error page, but that the view, if you look at the index, the URL, it still say index, okay? We never load a, a error page. We just load the same page, but different content in the body. And the error here, because we don't have the user again, because when I when I load it here, I did not include the, um, the config, right? Okay, so over here, my config file has everything I need. But I don't want to put that here again. If I do that inside there, I'm going to have a, a loop. So uh, normally, you know, you don't want to put it here. You will load another function or another uh, include and put it in there. Uh, but for now, that's okay. And then the, to remove the error, uh, you can, uh, the warning, that's that's not an error, okay? This is just a warning. The warning me, it doesn't crash your pages so when you still see it. But you still don't want to show warning here. And you can turn this off, on and off by 
uh, I think we have a function called error reporting. It's a reporting here. And then answer here has some constants. And can you just say, um, is it warning? Yeah, uh, there are a warning here, okay? If you turn that on or off, I don't know if it's true or not. Let's see. Yeah, that's on. Or if you don't want to put errors, just put zero. Zero means uh, no. Let me see. Okay, so the zero means turn off all those warning errors. Um, not only warnings, but also um, messages here. So if you want to turn that all off, if you want to pick and choose only the type of error you want to put, then you specify those numbers here. Even though this are numbers, you can also put the actual constant, right? If you remember, control tab will tell you, uh, control space bar, E warning, this are the constant variable, or you can use the number in itself, right? I only want to display all the warnings, you put a two. I want to display only the fatal errors, the core errors, you put a 16 and then a one here, whatever it is, right? You can pick and choose. If you don't want to put anything, then put zero. And then the zero, if you go down all the way to the bottom somewhere, um, it'll be the, uh, the zero will be no. Or you put zero here, and it will turn off the warning. Just for this page here, right? <clears throat> so we have an error, it's, it does work. Again, so you go back and change it back to the normal one. Save, refresh and then go back again. Okay, I think it's break time. So, see you in 10. Sounds good. Okay. Okay, so we got that working and then uh, the next thing we want to do is go ahead and load the data to the front page here. And that should be easy now because we already have the database connection. Um, we're going to get all the pages as opposed to one and we'll print the data. So go to the index page here. So notice again the logic is here, right? So before we load the index view uh, over here, that's this guy right here. Right, it needs, we need the page object um, to load its, of its page. So the title, it's part of the page, right? You get the title here. You're gonna get the title, get the date, uh, the content and in there. So in the index page, before we call this function, I just did that because you wanna see what it looks like right off the bat, because once you have and that the way you want it, and then you can go ahead and perform the logic, right? <clears throat> so right here, before we call this file, we include the header. Um, okay, and then right here, we can go into uh, PHP mode again. <clears throat> we need to do the, uh, the fetch stuff, right? Oh, come on. You're already under PHP. Like it, like it already says PHP on the very top. Oh, I did. Okay. Duh. <laughs> Thank you. <clears throat> okay, so we're gonna try and catch here. Okay, again, just just in case so that we get any error, we're gonna um, handle it. So I put here again E. I I do this because inside here I'm gonna do the DB connection, and once I have the error then it's like before, right? You're gonna put here the title, uh, page title. It's gonna be um, error. And then now I already include the header and the footer. So all I need to do, this is very similar to what we did inside the database here, right? Notice I did up here, right? Just repeat it. I already have this and that. I just need this part, okay? So I need to load that error view to the view. So that will go right in here. And I have to override my page title, otherwise it would say home page. And I want I don't want that, right? It needs to say error page. So load that, and then uh, that's it for this one. Now the try block, 
the, the view here needs to go inside the try block somewhere in here. Okay, that's the logic, right? But before we even load that, we want to do the DB connection first. And you want to load the DB. Um, so we get the result. It's going to be from the DB. And then we call that not connect, but the get all. Okay. I notice I have a lot here because all of these are coming from the different um, you know, units. So it's a little bit confusing. That's why it's kind of bad to do this. So usually you do it in your own folder, but anyway. So the one I get is uh, the one that says get page, get all page, okay, right here. It's get all pages. And what I need, I need a table and table is called table uh, pages. I pass that to it. It's gonna pass, <clears throat> go into that function. You control click. Go right inside here. Get the data, get everything back, return the data result back. We don't know if it's successful or not. I did not try here. It's okay because I already try in here, right? It's already tried here. So it's gonna copy it anyway. I catch it, if it is an error, it's gonna catch it down here. So when it comes back, we need to check if the result is there or not. So if the result, if the result is successful, and also, I want to make sure that we actually get some data. Successful, but maybe, you know, it doesn't mean that we actually got data back. It just be that maybe something is okay, but there's no record, zero record, right? And also, I want to make sure that the, because um, the result set, it can point to a function called row count. And that will count the number of rows it returns. And it has to be greater than zero, okay? Otherwise, there's no data, and then there's no point of continuing on. If that is the case, then go ahead, and I'm going to go and move, keep moving this inside here. Otherwise, I have an error. So something is not. So else, put here, you can throw an error here. I can throw an error because this is the result is either zero or something fail, <clears throat> right? And then you can throw an error, you can force it to throw an error. And this, ex oops, uh, the exception, um, and then the exception, now I wanna do a new exception, okay? So new exception class, and then this exception, we pass a message here, once you throw it, it's gonna be caught down here anyway, okay? If there's an error in here with the DB thing, it's gonna throw, automatically be caught down here. If you throw, um, explicitly throw, we will catch it on here too, okay? So I wanna throw error, something like um, uh, no content or something wrong, okay? I don't know what that is, but I know that something is wrong. I'm gonna throw that message, go to the E, and then E will print out in the error message file because in the error, Print the message here. Okay. So, so now if it does have some stuff, which is good, right? Then we do the same thing as before. <clears throat> okay, we're gonna fetch it, right? So we do a result, fetch, set the fetch mode. Back to that again, so the PDO. Oh, and then we want the one that says fetch class again. And the class again is still gonna be page, just like before. So we set the result uh, <clears throat> fetch mode to that page. And then now, if you look at what we did in the, in the DB class, we, we got that, right? We, we fetch the mode, and then we're gonna do a page equal fetch statement here. You could do that here if you want to, it's okay. If you do here, then you have to modify the index page view here to change it because in the index view, if you open that, you see that we do the, um, <clears throat> I don't do it here, but you, you can do the fetch inside here too because I, I know that I set the mode here and inside that page, 
do I want to, um, I mean, the index unit, do I fetch it there or do I do it elsewhere? So a lot of options. So let's say that I'm gonna fetch inside here because I use a loop and loop through the entire fetch. And then I'll do a, um, um, an output here. So I'll, I'll set this up. The result is good to go. I include this in here. So the result is visible, right? It's visible inside the index. So now up here, I'm going to go into the PHP mode. Okay. And then I'm going to do a while loop. While something is, I have content, right? That's what I mean. Go ahead, I'm, I'm going to delete one of these. I just use one. So this will be repeated inside the while loop. So I'll do here, I'll close right in here. And then uh, this part goes right inside HTML mode. And then down here, I go back to PHP mode. Okay, just close that curly here, that's all. And that's inside my index. So I'm gonna have a lot of articles inside here. So what's gonna be tested inside here is the page. So I have a page object is assigned a result. Result, right? This result here is this result here. It's right in there, right? <clears throat> the result. And I'm gonna fetch, oops. The result is gonna fetch it, that's all. Because I already set the type. I know the arrows, the, the red line says it doesn't exist, but we know it exists. Okay, so while there are pages, so it, it, it'll fetch one at a time, add it to the page object, and then I go out to the uh, mode here, HTML mode, and then I'm gonna add the date to the, the line here. So the date I put here, um, doesn't matter how you do, okay? I just happen to put a date here and then the title. You can put a title and then a date below that. Maybe it makes more sense this way. The title here and then down here we have date, right? <clears throat> so the title will be, I'll replace this now with this page. It's an object, remember? An object of the page class. So, right? Get the title. That function is inside the page class, right? You're gonna get the title, get the creator ID, get the title, get the content, get the date, add it, update, all that access through this page object because we assign this result to the page class, okay? So page title goes here. Um, this will be a date, so I'll put here, oops. Page get date, uh, add it, I think. And then this is the actual um, article. So put it here, the page, um, I think that's the, um, the intro. Uh, get control only, not the actual content. And then we have the ID here. Okay, so instead of 12, it's gonna be that, and then dot, um, not dot, I mean, equal, people right inside here, I think that's, that's fine, right? So page get ID. There you go. <clears throat> and then it's gonna loop that into how many articles we have, it's gonna render that to the index page. So this is the view for the index page. It'll be very similar to the actual page when we load the page. So the page controller, for example. And we can, I think it uh, looks good here. Let me go ahead and reformat my code. Okay, so a little bit cleaner. Um, 
to save and let's give it a try. Go to the browser, refresh the page. So here we have the pages, okay? I didn't put into like columns, but uh, this is the first post and then the second post and all the way to, I didn't limit my post. I could just limit to only three or four or five, but I put everything here. Um, formatting it just it's something else. But for now, you can see that the title and then the introduction here and then the actual content. Uh, if I mouse over this, you notice on the very bottom left, the ID is four, go down here, ID is seven, All right? So page, we're gonna go to the page controller and get the ID and then show the detail of this post or this page. Mine's being weird, but I, it just, I don't know. It's like, I can't, it doesn't have a database selected, but I do, but I have it connecting to the database on PHP, my admin. So I don't know if that has something to do with it or if it's just doesn't like me. So, um, so you're not able to load data? Yeah, hold on, what was the error it gave me? Um, yeah, it could be um, this invalid catalog name, no database selected. Does it tell you what line number it is called from and which file? No, it just says SQL state 3D00 zero zero something invalid catalog name 1046. It just, it just, that's all it says. Like when I tried loading the page. Mm. It, it just happened now, right? When you uh, when we access the um, the get pages, before that was working fine, or, or yeah, I mean, I got like the little success thing before, but I also couldn't like oh. intentionally get it to like crash, and like I couldn't get the error screen before because even if I just punched in a bunch of letters for the database name, so I, I don't know, something must be weird, but I don't remember how to like load it the database into uh, PHP Storm on its own. So I've just kind of been going with this. Um, yeah, I think there's a, it's a disconnect somewhere. Yeah, whoops. <laughs> okay, well, um, but, but if you're able to connect your database, you say it was successful, right? Um, so I, I'm thinking it's probably has to do with the, um, the query here when you do the fetch. So like in your fetch uh, statements down here. Um, I'm not sure if it was connecting to, the, to begin with, to be honest. Okay, well, what did you call your database? Did you call it? Because I forgot, yeah, mine is called uh, Advanced DB PHP. Okay, called. CMS. So you have this content that you are at your database. Yeah, that's all on PHP at my admin. That's all on there. I had okay. named mine like jperoni underscore ADV PHP CMS, and I did like my username and password. And okay, so that's where um, it stops. So that's that. So the, the tables, remember they are plural. Okay. So if you put in your code, yep. um, those are all in there. Uh, you're able to connect. That's the part where I'm not sure. Like it's it's a where the, in the cap statement it says the page title isn't used. Like um, like where it switches to error if it crashes. Um, for the include statements, I had to like. In order for it to even find like the header error stuff, I had to like put the whole path starting from the root directory all the way down for some reason. Um, you want to share your screen? Do yeah, you I can. I could do that. That might be better. We can do that. And take a look. Uh, let me stop sharing mine. You can share yours. Take a look. Sorry. I was... Problem. Okay. 
Okay. See, like this is like that, like. Um, okay, so page title is there. Um, this part okay. never runs. Even if I intentionally crash this, this doesn't run. Yeah, the include, the include you don't have to say um, unit seven. Because, yeah, but like. Yeah, you because you're already um, inside the DB. So you don't have to say that. Just say includes, yeah, includes, and then header, and then includes uh, views. Yeah, it's so weird. You need, yeah, you need that. Uh, yeah. yeah, because you already, you already, you're starting from the root directory, okay, which mm -hmm. is in this case would be from the demo folder or uh, the unit seven folder, right? Yeah, right. I guess unit seven and I have the demo folder because I'll put the assignment for this week also in the unit seven folder because that's how I have it arranged. Mm -hmm. Okay. But like this right thing, but anyway, uh, this part doesn't run at all. Like okay, even so if I, um, so your index is outside of the outside of the demo folder. It's in, in the de it's still in the demo folder. It's oh, just it um. Oh, okay, so you run yeah. it from the demo folder. Okay, I, I got it. Yep, okay. and then the views. The other one is in the views folder. Yeah. Okay, so that's that's fine. Uh, looks good. And then config um, folder, config ones in the same one. Config is includes models, models. Uh, okay, yeah, that looks good. Um, DB, okay, looks nice. Okay, okay that's I don't cool. think it likes the fact that I have other yeah, stuff that's, in here. Yeah, that's fine. <clears throat> um, so usually, I mean, we'll name spaces so he doesn't get confused but um, that's besides the point all right so that looks i think that's good there the get all pages from order by date edit all right that's good return beautifully and that's fine you get one page we haven't uh called that yet but um we will see that in a minute okay let's see your index page then the uh the actual index page not the view but yeah that good one. this one yeah yeah so you got a title uh, you got a header, good, and then we have your page result. But now when I run it, it'll it'll pull. It'll actually run this. Yeah, let's try it. <clears throat> okay, that's good. At least something there. No yeah. Right. right. So maybe you didn't select your DB. Let's go back to the code again. In the PDO. Uh, in a DB connection, the DB file. This one. Uh, go up to the PDO. Okay, so post Apollo GTC uh, DB, instead of DB, it has to say DB name. That's what the error is. Oh, that would. Yeah, it says DB name. It's PDO and just get to remember that. Yeah. Oof, no, it's one. Yeah, you got one. That's a, that's a start. Yeah, so uh, let's see. Why do you have, do you only have one? <laughs> is that why? Could be it. Yeah. Okay. Oh, see, this is, this, is, this doesn't. Oh, okay, because you, yeah, you didn't, you didn't add the uh, code yet. Let's see. <laughs> Result, fetch, and then. Uh, yeah. yeah, do you only have it's one in fun. your database? No, I, I just imported this. There we go. Yay. There you That's go. Better. Perfect. Yay. Cool. All right. <laughs> Nailed <Yeah>. it. <laughs> that, was, that was a hard one. Um, but I'm glad we fixed that. Same. Yeah, it's, it's the DB name here. Okay. So these are really, really tricky. The driver, the host, and the DB name. All right, so we got that going. And then uh, now we are going to create the result pages for every page that we load, right? So we click on the link of that view page over here. When I click on this, it's going to call the load the page and then we're going to get the ID for the query and then we load the content here using the get a single page, right? So in here, uh, in the view, 
we're going to create uh, something kind of similar to the index. So I'm just going to copy uh, this index here again. Control C, Control V, and we call this the page. And I can close the index view now. I have to maybe config can be closed. The uh, page can be closed. Uh, error can be closed. Header here, all this can be closed. So open that page file. Index can be closed. So what do we have in the page? Uh, depends on what you want to show here. So we want to show, um, you know, the same as before, the title, the date added. We need this, this, uh, not the intro anymore. We want to get the content. So I would here get content because we have the full uh, content here. And then down here, I'm not going to put the link here again because, you know, it's it's already done. I'm not going to show more. Everything will be loaded here. Now up here, I do the fetch here again. We'll leave the asking for now, but let's go and this is the view, by the way, right? This is the view. We're still gonna come back and see if this is the way you want or not. Let's, let's go to the main index page and let's duplicate this index. It will look kind of similar here anyway. The difference is just we're gonna call the single function, okay? So control C, control V for this index and call it page. So the page, Controller, page, view. Okay, so again, sometimes you want to call it view and then view, view. Not too confusing. But open that page uh, controller and we include everything here. The title will be um, page for now. And then we're going to call a function not get all, but get one page. It needs two things, okay? It needs the table and it needs an ID. And we're gonna put it here for now. It's a placeholder, we're gonna get that ID. So before we do this, we need to uh, load or get the ID from the index page, right? Because uh, the index page, when I load it down here, uh, I pass an ID in the URL. So before we call this result, we're going to uh, get the ID. So we'll say if the ID is set, actually, if it's not set, right? If it's not set, you can say it for the underscore get ID that is not set or um, that's fine. Or you can check it so it is, it's not valid. There's a filter, you can filter so that only, um, only takes integer and that is, um, you can add it here too. Maybe it's a filter uh, filter function. So if it's not filter attribute, uh, filter var. Okay, this one here filters the data type you want to, to get. You want only to be integer. So I mean, you can check it manually if you want. It's, if it's not set, it do something. And if the ID is not a number to do something, something, right? You can do that manually, or you can do all in one go by using this filter function. This one here will check to see if the get ID is a number, okay? So this function here takes, uh, I think, uh, two parameters or three parameters. That is the field I want to, or the value I want to check. And the filter type here, if you put filter, you take, you see a lot of things here. What type do I want? Similar to how we do the fetch here, one mode and one, right? So the filter type, I want this to be integer. So if it's, I want to validate this, you go down here, there's one for validate, um, right here. Validate the, is a, a, an email, a flow, an integer. On us. I want to be integer only. So you validate that to be integer. And you can stop there if you want. Okay, we can leave it here. What if, you know, we accidentally, somebody accidentally added an integer of like a negative three, right? So negative three doesn't work because, and the ID in the table, you cannot have negative IDs. Okay, so you can add another attribute here. Um, you can check to make sure that the array in the range, there is an array 
a function called the minimum range. This one here has to be greater than or equal to one, right? So the ID is always starts from one in the database, right? And here, you cannot have a negative ID here. It cannot be a negative, it cannot be less than one. You cannot have zero, okay? So it has to be one or greater. So, so therefore, if that is the case, and then we're good. If it's not the case, right? If it's not set or it's not, um, doesn't met doesn't met this uh, criteria, then we have a problem. Okay, so the problem is we throw it, throw a new exception, say uh, invalid um, ID or out of range. We throw that error, everything will be skipped and it'll be caught down here, and then we. Display here. We can test that here, okay? And if if this is not true, then we're good to go. And then now go ahead and get ID from the get ID. And then now we can pass this ID to the get one page function and then call that DB function. <coughs> Okay, so notice when we call this function get one, we go back in here, we get one, right? The end result is we return a page back. So the page is already the object, okay? Or return, return null. Object is also set to null if it's never been created, right? So that's what object is. So either a, a page, that contains the actual content already, a single page, which only fetch one or null. Okay. So therefore, when it comes back, so this is not going to be um, uh, used here. So instead of saying result, I'm going to call it page because the, the data coming back is already a page object. And then when, so I'm gonna remove this whole part here. And we'll do an if still. If the page is not null, right? That's what it means. If page, I mean, it's not null, and then we'll go ahead and include that page here. If it's not null, then go ahead and the views will be not index will be a page. Okay. And then if you look at the page again, put over here so you can see better. Oops. Uh, lost. The page view. Okay, so we, um, we gonna fetch the result. That's what it says in the view, right? So that means the page has been created, which is good because in our page, that's what we got. We got the page ready. And then we just go ahead and then uh, fetch it. Fetch the page. Um, otherwise, if the page is not successful or if it's no, then we have no content. So again, we throw another error. And again, it will be caught by this one. If it is successful, go ahead and view the, load the page and then add the content, the, the, the title, and then and so on. And this is actually not correct because we're not looping through the thing here, right? It's just a single page. So really, we don't even need this. 
We're not going to do a fetch again because we already did it inside here, right? We already does the fetch here. We already got the content that we need. So when it goes here, successful, we load the page and then we just use it, okay? So this thing can go away. Um, this whole thing can go away. So all these can go away. The HTML part actually can go away because we're just gonna load the content right away. We got the page title, the they added, and the content. And let me clean this up. So it's much shorter than the other one. And if you want to allow the user or the, the owner to edit this page, you can add edit link here. But if the user is is uh, is the owner, right? Otherwise, don't edit. You can you can put it here, or you can you can include in the um, in the index right here. You can add so that after each of these article, you can put an edit mode, but you check the user. If the user is present, then go ahead and edit uh, along with the ID. Otherwise, don't, right? So for now, we're just gonna do without any of those edits. All right, so let's go back and see if it works. So there we go. Click on the first one. And I got an error. Uh, I probably mistyped my error page 41. So my DB has there, yeah, return page. I have an error here, okay? It should be a dollar sign. Got that all the time. So let's try again. So there's the article right there. Okay, so we get the ID four and then it loads, good. Go back to the home page, load the, another one here. Good. So we load content, dynamic content, using a single page uh, controller called page, and we pass the ID to it. This is kind of similar to how you did with the, um, the cars and planes and boats. Do you remember that one? Right? We have a single page, we load the ID, and we load the content. That file, that program, we did not use controller in that field because it used a lot of if and else block. But here we're using controller in views. So now we can test the ID here. So if I put like an ID of uh, a minus one, right? notice we got an error because negative is not allowed, right? Our code, we, we tested that. If I enter a non-native number, a non number like a, a P, right? Same thing, I got an invalid ID or out of range number. Okay, so we uh, use that code here uh, inside the page, okay, this piece of code here actually does that for you. Is it set? If it's not set, then we get an error. It is set, but it's an invalid because it's not an integer, then error. If it's an integer, but it's, it's not greater than one, then error. So we have, you know, two ways to do it. Okay, so I hope this is um, helpful in understanding how this works. So normally, this is just one way to do it, right? So normally you're not gonna put all your controllers here. You don't have to do this, but I'll show you really quickly. So normally you put a single page here, I'll call it um, maybe just a, a route, okay? A route goes here and I will switch the the get here, the get of the route, okay? If the route is going to, let's just say the home, then I will load an object. So over here in the controller, I will have another folder here. Oops. I have a, um, just really quickly. So I have the controller here. 
Inside a controller, you're gonna have a new class. For example, you call it home controller. Okay, and then I have another one here for, you know, uh, page controller. Inside the page controller, you have functions like this. Public uh, function load page, right? You have a public function uh, delete page and then so on. And then inside the uh, home controller, again, public function load home page and so forth, okay? So you have those in there. And then in your route over here, if it's home, then you're gonna create an object. So you can do up here if you want right away, home is equal to home object, home controller. And then page is equal to no page controller, oops. Right, if it's home, then I'm gonna go to the home controller, load the page, load the home page, great, right? And then if it's a uh, delete, then I go to the delete page. So page, delete. And then if it's a um, page, then you go and load the page. So that's how usually you do it. And then, you know, your index page will load the route and then you just load the content here. So your URL usually doesn't change. It will be kind of similar to how we generate the error. And then, uh, you know, you just load content like this, right? The index, the page has error, but over here, I saw the home page. If I do something, I custom error. It's still the index page, but I had to do content here. Okay. And then so when you do this way, all your controllers will be inside this controller file. Outside here, you might have just one main index file or main route file that control all that navigates all the routes to their correct places. All right. So we just did, you know, mainly just review uh, view pages and things like that. Um, you can also do register the user. We did not verify the user is indeed um, a valid user or not. But usually we do that and you can have, so that the page can have uh, an edit mode or, or they can delete pages and things like that. You do that before with the guest book, same idea. All right. Okay, that's all I have. So thank you guys. So the homework assignment will be similar to what we just did. Um, the logic is still the same. The way the author did in the book is a little bit different, um, but you are more than welcome to do exactly what's in the book or you can modify it to do it this way. Uh, that's entirely up to you. Um, one thing that I mentioned in my slides, I mean, in my notes over here, when you get there, is that in the book or the exercise ask you to use, um, so this part here, I turn that off, okay? I'm not gonna do that part here. So uh, it, it, one of the pages actually uses the HTML preform format. So when you get there to that page, uh, just don't use it, just convert that into regular HTML, a login form uh, and do it that way, okay? If you get stuck, just let me know. Um, just a lot of errors for this quick form. All right, very quick guys. <laughs> so have a good weekend and I will see you all next week. Have a good weekend. Thank you, good night. Yep.